Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I'd like to ask first that you just please take a moment to take a deep breath with me. Okay, I just want you to be relaxed. And I want to ask that you'll please try to watch this entire video and try to pay attention. I'm going to try to make it short, explain things the best that I can. And uh, so what's this video about? Well, let's see here. I'm going to write this. Okay. We're going to go over 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4. Okay. We're going a little bit high there. And we're going to talk about the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4. Okay. Actually, we're going to talk about what I believe now is the lack of the rapture in 1 Thessalonians 4. Oh, I didn't even put 4 up there. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Okay. So now probably a lot of you are already upset. And uh, I am too, but I have to teach what I think the Bible teaches. And so, anyways, let's talk about what's the idea of the rapture. The rapture is this idea that at some point... Jesus is going to appear in the clouds, and this is just a <laughs> crappy drawing here, but let's see, you know. So, Jesus appears in the clouds, and then those who are living, who are believers in Christ, will be transformed, and they will be taken, um, they will be caught up to be with the Lord. And also, possibly people, uh, believers in Christ, they might have resurrected bodies or something and be caught up with the Lord too. Because First Thessalonians 4 says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And uh, then those of us who are alive and remain will be caught up with the Lord uh, in the air or in the clouds. So that's what this idea is, is that at some point in the future, the Lord's going to come, and then believers who are alive are going to be transformed and caught up, and they're not going to have to face death. Okay? But I'm saying now, I believe that this, in this passage at least, um, is false. Okay? But I want you to pay attention and listen, because I'm probably going to present something to you that you might not have heard before. And so... What I'm saying is I've come to the belief that uh, there is no such thing as a rapture um, taught you know, in the scriptures that people use to teach it, which I've done myself. So this is a major doctrinal change for me, and I've now removed this from my doctrinal statement. But I'm not teaching a post-trib rapture. I'm not teaching a mid-trib rapture. I'm teaching a no rapture, okay? Because still, mid-trib and post-trib people, they go to Thess 1 Thessalonians 4, and they, they say that this is the rapture, but, you know, the post-tribs, they'll say that this is at the second coming, you know, or whatever else. But they'll still teach that this is rapture. I'm saying this doesn't teach a rapture. Okay, so I'll read the whole passage, which is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, and then I'm going to go over some of the phrases, some of the verses, and break it down and try to help you understand what I have come to understand this passage to mean. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18 says, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which, re we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort, comfort one another with these words. So first of all, I want to talk at the beginning here in verse 13. He says, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. And he's speaking figuratively of those who are physically dead. Their physical bodies are dead. Okay, they're, That's what he means by those who are asleep. Okay, He's not teaching soul sleep, that they're just asleep, uh, you know, 
in the dirt that their souls are sleeping or whatever. He's just saying that the physical body is dead. They are deceased physically uh, from this world. Okay. Now, he says, If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Okay, now what he's saying here is that those who sleep in Jesus, those who are dead in Christ, dead believers, dead saints, they will be raised like Jesus. Okay, and when does this happen? This happens at death. And what, what it means that God will bring with him is, is it means that God will bring them up to heaven after death like Jesus rose, okay? Um, and so I just listened to Stephen Anderson today just for a little bit, and he's, he teaches a post-trib, and so he says, he focuses on this part, uh, will God bring with him? So people, and so he's saying God will bring the, the dead saints with him at the second coming, when, when Jesus comes at the second coming. But that, I think that's a misrepresentation of this verse. So people get caught up on this phrase, bring with him. They take it to mean that the dead saints will come with the Lord at the rapture or the second coming. They fail to take in the entire context of the verse. Okay. Now, I kind of want to write this out, actually, if I can. Maybe it'll help you if I give you kind of a visual. Just of this verse. Um... Okay, let's see here. I want to do this right here. So, is it an actual verse? Okay, so it's basically verse 14. So, how far over am I? Okay, so verse 14 here says... For if we believe, and I hope that this will show up good on the camera from far away. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, how much further do I got? If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them which sleep in Jesus. Okay, I just want to end it right there. I'm cutting the verse a little bit short to show a point to try to hopefully help you see this. And uh, let's see, I might zoom in because I don't know if it's very clear. Might still not be clear, I don't know. But might be backwards too, I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> I can't tell. It's going to suck if I do this and it's all backwards. But anyways, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, okay, even so, them which sleep in Jesus will... Dot, dot, dot. Okay, and it finishes, uh, God bring with him. Will God bring with him? And like I said... A lot of people interpret that to mean that God will bring the dead saints with him at the rapture or the resurrection. But that doesn't follow what the verse is teaching. For if we believe that Jesus, what, died and what, rose again, even so them, the believers who are dead will, what, rise again. Okay? That's the context of this. 
try to underline that. Rise again. Rose again. So I hope you're following this. Maybe I'm not doing it good enough, but okay. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them which are dead will, what? Rise again. So that's what it means when it says God bring with him. It means take them from the grave, okay? They will be resurrected like Jesus was. And when does that happen? That happens at death, okay? So, I hope that you get that. Um, and so focusing, you know, on will God, God will bring with them, or will God bring with them, um, they're, they're focusing on that portion of this verse and totally missing the entire context. Okay, he's comparing these two things, comparing Jesus being dead and rising again to those who believe in Jesus who are dead and the fact that they will rise again. They actually already have. Okay, so let's move on. I'll do more and more and more teachings on this, I'm sure. This will be a doctrine that I'll hate now, the rapture, because it's so commonly taught. I even taught it myself. But I always re-examine things, and I've had some questions about this. But uh, anyways, let's move on. Now, also, okay, like I said here, it's saying that Jesus died and rose again, so those who believe in Jesus who are already dead, they will rise again. They actually already have. Now, this is uh, consistent with what Paul has said before. Look at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verses 16 and 18. He said, For if the dead rise not, then Christ is not raised. Okay, it's basically the same thing that I said that he said in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, but it's, it's much quicker and to the point. If the dead rise not, then Christ is not raised. If Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, you are yet in your sins, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Okay? So that's basically the exact same thing that he says here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. He's comparing the resurrection of Christ to the resurrection of dead saints. Okay, does it have anything to do with God bringing the saints at the second coming or at the rapture? It has to do with the resurrection. So I hope that you're getting this. And also look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, 12 through 23 to get kind of the whole context of that to get even more of it. You know, Jesus said in John 14, 3, and I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And I used to think that was a possible rapture passage too, but it's not. It's talking about the resurrection after death. Jesus comes for his saints. Okay. And now, now here's another tricky part where people get mixed up on, including myself. I have before, and I think I have a better understanding of it now. We go to verse 15. And in the latter part of it, verse 15, he says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which sleep. So I want to look at this part where he says, We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. Now what I believe this means is we who are physically alive and remain in Christ until death. Okay, until the Lord comes, which is death. And um, so what he's saying here, because most people will think, they'll look at this and they'll say, we who are alive and remain, so they think that means remain alive. Okay, those of us who remain alive until the Lord comes, and then we're raptured or the second coming. Okay, no, I'm saying that he's saying that we who are alive now opposed to those who are dead in Christ, we who are alive and remain in Christ, um, we shall not prevent them which are asleep. Okay. So I hope you get that. I'm saying that he's saying we which are alive, which means physically alive, and remain in Christ. Okay. He doesn't say remain in Christ. He just says remain. But I, I think that fits more with the context. Remain unto the coming of the Lord. I think that's the key. Remain unto the coming of the Lord. Okay, remain in what? 
And uh, previously he talked about those who are asleep in Jesus. Okay, so he's constantly saying this. And this goes on with, with other verses. Um, also look at John 15, 1 through 6. Okay, we'll go to John 15. John 15, 1 through 6 says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So, the Lord Jesus talked about abiding. I'm going to back out, I guess, a little bit now. Anyways, Jesus talked about abiding in him. Okay, and we're not talking about conditional salvation. A person can lose their salvation. We're not talking about work salvation. But there's all these <laughs> verses, you know, that talk about remaining in the faith. And I think basically what it's saying is that Jesus is the only true way. The only way that you're going to get these promises is if you're in Christ. Okay. So, we also see, Paul said, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 through 23, And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your own mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight, if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. So he basically said that you're reconciled to God, and he's going to present you holy and unblameable, and then he says, if you continue in the faith. Okay, so it's not that salvation, is, it's not that perseverance in the faith is a requirement for salvation, um, but this is more of a warning uh, for people who who never truly gave their heart to the Lord, and then later on they're going to try to, um, you know, go back to another way of salvation or to another God, a false God or something. Um, it's a warning. And so I'm going to move on from that. And then he says that you shall not prevent them which sleep. And prevent here is different than we would normally think. We think prevent means to stop somebody from doing something. But in this uh, way it means shall not anticipate or go before. Okay, and we can see Psalm 88.13 as an example for that. Go to Psalm 88.13. Psalm 88.13 says, But unto thee have I cried, O Lord, in the morning shall my prayer prevent thee. Okay, this means that shall my prayer go before thee. Okay, basically just, you know, early, first thing in the morning, he's, he's praying. So he's saying that those who are alive and remain in Christ until his coming, until death, shall not prevent or go before those who are asleep in Jesus, so he's saying, you know, we're not going to be, we're not going to be uh, with Jesus resurrected, waiting on those who who died before us to be with us. Okay, you know, they're going to be waiting on us. They're not really going to be waiting on us, but they're going to be there already. Okay, uh, so he's assuring the people of that, and um, so then he goes on to say, the dead in Christ shall rise first which means the saints who are already dead are already resurrected, then we which are alive and remain in Christ shall be caught up together with them in the clouds when we die to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And so the comfort is being in heaven with deceased brothers and sisters and being with Christ. And this promise is only for those who are grounded and rooted in Christ. And so 
You know, he talks about those who are asleep in Jesus. He talks about those who are dead in Christ. And I think that when he says alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, he's saying remain in Christ unto the coming of the Lord. So, you know, this promise of being resurrected, this promise of eternal life is only for those in Christ. Okay, dead and alive, you must be in Christ. And so that's what I think this passage is speaking of. And uh, there's lots of other, and there's other passages that people use to teach the rapture, like 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, which says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised and corruptible, and we shall be changed. And uh, a lot of people wonder, you know, what does the last trump mean? Is it one of the trumpets in Revelation or whatever? And they have different ideas. I think that the last trump is just a figure of speech like the last breath or the last bow. So in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last breath, at the moment of death, okay, the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised and corruptible and then we shall be changed. So at death, we get our new glorified body and go to heaven to be with Christ. And, um, and you know, what about the trumpet shall sound? What does that mean? Well, it could mean a lot of different things. I think it's symbolic. It might not really be, you know, an audible trumpet, but it could be because the appearing of Christ, we see Christ and he is the king of kings. So it's kind of like a royal uh, entrance with the trumpet. Um, you know, could be lots of things, but that's something else. But I think that the last trump is the last breath, and I want to do more on that verse and that whole passage by itself, But and also go on to First Thessalonians chapter 5, continuing from chapter 4. But I hope that I've helped you to think outside the box and see that, um, you know, this seems more consistent with Scripture to me, um, you know, from the beginning when he says that, them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He's talking about raising them from the dead, not bringing them with him at the second coming or at some other time. Um, and he's also, when he says, we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, he's talking about remaining in the faith, remaining in Christ. This promise is only guaranteed to those who are in Christ. Okay. Um, so, that's how I see it, and that poses a lot of other questions. There's a whole lot more that I have to study. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the, on YouTube, or go to kjbforum.com, or kjbchat, or accept you be converted, send me emails, Facebook, whatever. Um, you know, as far as <laughs> Daniel's 70th week, and the Antichrist, and the Millennial Kingdom, and all this stuff, it's all in the balance now. So I have to re-examine everything. And, you know, I'm not sure how it's all interpreted. But uh, it's probably, it'll probably take a while to figure all that stuff out, you know, if ever. But it's unfortunate that I've been teaching the rapture for like a year. And uh, it's because, you know, I came across teachers who taught it. And I looked at things they were saying, and it seemed to line up. I didn't really know a lot about figures of speech and and the context and everything else, and the more and more that I've learned, I re-examine doctrines that I teach to reinforce them, and I examine, you know, uh, other doctrines that people teach that I figure are false, you know, I find out are they false or are they true, and so I've looked at this over and over, and I've said before this that I don't believe in the judgment seat of Christ as it is taught that, you know, there's loss of rewards for Christians or whatever, that's all nonsense, and that's kind of one of the pillars of the, the rapture. Um, in any time, really, post-trib, pre-trib, mid-trib. Um, you know, and where does it stand as far as Israel and the nation of Israel? Are there still prophecies that are unfulfilled and stuff? Well, I don't think that the Bible teaches replacement theology. I mean, I've studied that quite a bit. I'm still studying it and everything, but uh, I can't accept that. I can't accept replacement theology. But maybe there's other ways to look at it and stuff. I don't really know what still needs to yet be fulfilled, what's symbolic, or, you know, there's, there's just a lot that needs to be looked at and considered. But I really think that uh, we're deceiving ourselves if we think that this First Thessalonians 4 teaches some kind of a rapture where we're not going to have to face death and we're just going to be taken by the Lord at any moment. Uh, one of the reasons why I have 
believe the pre-trib rapture. There's a lot of reasons, but there's lots of times where the Bible talks about you know, the eminency of Christ, like this could happen at any moment. And so now I'm realizing that if we understand this as death, then that also fits. Death can happen at any moment. Okay, so I think that a lot of times when it's talking about the coming of Christ or the appearing of Christ, it's talking about death. Um, so anyways, I'll end that here, and I'm sure I'll have a lot more to say about it, but I hope that that helps somewhat. But I can't support uh, rapture, the idea of the rapture in First Thessalonians 4, not at all. This is much more consistent with Scripture. Um, you know, just like Christ raised, the dead in Christ will be raised, and those who are in Christ um, and alive right now, when we die, when we meet the Lord, we will be raised as well, and we'll be with those who are already raised. So, I guess I'll pray real quick. Dear Lord, thank you, God. Uh, there's so much that we need to understand in your word, and uh, we just need your help, God. But we, we uh, are very grateful of the promise of eternal life that you've given us, God, and that we will be with you, and that we'll be with our dead brothers and sisters um, one day. We look forward to that. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, thanks for watching. There will be a lot more to come. God bless.